Hello students, I'm Dr. Arpita De. A very warm welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's topic of discussion is dinoflagellates. This group of organism is also otherwise known as pyrophyce or fire algae. The content includes the characteristic features of dinoflagellates and two very important natural phenomena related to them. So now let's first start our discussion with the characteristic features of dinoflagellates. These are unicellular brown or yellowish brown algae with ribbon like flagella. Majority of the members are marine in nature. They can either be autotrophs or heterotrophs. Autotrophs means they can manufacture their own food and heterotrophs means what? They depend on some other organisms for food supply. The wall is composed of stiff plate made of cellulose. It shows what? The wall is very tough in nature. Reserve food material is in the form of starch and oil droplets. Now let's come to the uh, bodily feature of dinoflagellate. Focus on this diagram. It shows the ventral view as well as the tarsal view of the organism. In the ventral view, let's see, this part is the apical part or anterior part and this one is the antapex or posterior part. In the apical part, we see the presence of apical horn this part which includes the apical horn is known as epitheca. Epitheca is the anterior portion of their body. It is followed by cingulum. You can say this is the connection or the junction between the apical part and the uh, posterior part or anterior and the posterior part. Epitheca and hypotheca are connected through a cingulum. In this part, we see the presence of a flagellar pore from where the flagella emerges. Alright, next we come to the dorsal view. In this dorsal view, we see antapical horns. The presence of antapical horns are marked in the posterior region. Over here in the anterior part, we see plates and sutures. The number of the plates and the mode of arrangement, their mode of arrangement is known as tabulation. This is a more clearer diagram, all are from Google's. Uh, this diagram also shows the detailed parts of the organism's body. Now we'll come to the rest of their characteristic features. Locomotion occurs by virtue of the two flagella that arise from within the grooves. Here we are talking about this particular groove, this part. All right. Rod-like bodies called trichocysts are discharged into the medium by rapid hydration process. This act as a part of their defense mechanism since it is used for escaping from predators because after getting discharged into the medium, they become thinner and considerably longer. This is a very important part of dinoflagellate's lifestyle, life uh, cycle also you can say. This is a very important defense mechanism by virtue of which it can protect itself from various predating organisms in the marine environment. Next we'll come to the reproductive features of this organism. Rapid reproduction is the characteristic feature of dinoflagellates. The cis stage is a very prominent phase of the life cycle of dinoflagellates. They can only germinate during those times of the year when environmental conditions allow them to grow. The cyst breaks or hatches open and the swimming cell emerges out and reproduction commences by method of simple division. 
cells continue to divide under optimum conditions exponential growth is seen where two cells become four four becomes eight and so on growth ceases when nutrients get depleted depleted means it gets exhausted this is a time when gametes are formed two gametes unite to form a zygote this later develops into a cyst which rests at the seabed awaiting germination now what does this diagram show this diagram show exactly what i said two uh, strains one positive and one negative they unite to give rise to a zygote which is deployed in nature now okay this undergoes encystment the cyst rests at the bottom of the sea this waits for optimum the arrival of optimum conditions when optimum conditions come they start their germination process which is just carried out by simple division method okay now we'll talk about those two natural phenomenon which are signatures of this particular group of algae first we'll talk about red tide or algal bloom blooming high concentrations of aquatic microorganisms such as protozoans and unicellular algae like dinoflagellates and diatoms this is uh, what happens you know when there is high reproductive rate of an organism they grow they divide very fast this has certain effects massive storms cause upwelling of nutrients from the sea floor thus promoting exponential rise in algal reproduction now when there is uh, a massive storm what does it do it upwells a nutrient from the sea floor nutrients precipitate at the bottom of the sea now when there is a shaking movement when there is uh, something that is stirring those nutrients what happens those nutrients tend to come up it changes their level this promotes exponential rise in algal reproduction this bloom depends on wind direction and strength temperature salinity and nutrients red tide species can be found in oceans bays and estuaries but they cannot thrive in fresh water environment certain species of phytoplankton and dinoflagellates like gonelax found in red tides contain photosynthetic pigment that vary in color from brown to red rapid rate of multiplication makes the sea look red from here the name red tide has come the most prominent adverse effect of red tides are death of animals and toxic human exposure now when marine organisms consume this water along with the water they are consuming those algal organisms too what uh, normally happens is that these organisms tend to clog the gills of the fish this results in their rapid death natural toxins like brevitoxin and isotoxins are extremely harmful to marine life effects of red tides can worsen locally due to wind driven landmass circulation and their biological effects shell fish consume the organisms responsible for red tide and concentrate saxitoxin in their tissues saxitoxins block sodium channels and ingestion can cause paralysis within 30 minutes this shows that the rate of action is extremely rapid this is a picture of a red tide now the next phenomenon that we will be talking about is bioluminescence from the very word we can understand that it has got something to do with light the term bioluminescence pivots around the phenomenon of electron excitation it is what gives a firely firefly its shine makes waves glow at night and lights up a deep sea anglerfish required input of energy comes from the food the animal consumes certain types of proteins called luciferins store energy in the form of excited electrons the protein binding substrate luciferin dissociates from the protein under external influence and then an enzyme called luciferase acts upon it oxygen also takes part in this reaction and the electrical impulse serves as a start signal 
So this is the point where it starts. Okay. These electrons are freed from their bonds by enzymes called luciferase. The free electrons release energy in the form of photons or light while coming back to their ground state. As a result, the cell membrane potential changes and the cell, cell starts to glow. This is what you know the uh, extra amount of energy is given out in the form of light. Japanese scientist Osha, Osama Simamura received the Nobel Prize for his discovery of bioluminescence in jellyfish and GFP protein. What is GFP protein? It is green fluorescence protein. Okay, so this is all about our discussion about green algae. Hope the video has let you know something new about the topic. If you like the video, please do hit the bell icon to subscribe my channel and share it with others who are interested in it. Thank you so much for your kind attention.